Continuing a tradition that was begun when the trendy village of Nyack was simply known as a Native American fishing village, the Gabrielson family has earned a living by fishing the Hudson River. Every spring, they take the annual harvest of Hudson River shad for sale to the best French restaurants in New York City. They have overcome pollution, strict government control, and commercial overfishing to continue. But now a combination of factors is putting this time-honored tradition in serious jeopardy. Spring is here on the Hudson, the birds are back, everybody's memories are blooming like the flowers, and people come back to the river to celebrate the surviving of another winter. Chris Letts is like so many others who have for time immemorial flocked to the magnificent Hudson River to reap its splendid bounty. The spring migration to the river has been a regular occurrence here in the small village of Nyack long before its shores were discovered by European settlers. The village of Nyack, located a mere 20 miles north of the country's largest metropolis, New York City, has been a center for river life since prehistoric times. In fact, Nyack is an Algonquin Indian name meaning place of good fishing. It has provided a source of both food and income for many thousands ever since. Where I'm at right now, this, is, this was a fishing village. It was uh, a main source of, uh, of uh, work for the people around here and uh, the food that people along the river usually, used to eat. The Gabrielson family is one of the few remaining families that still reap what was once thought an endless bounty from the river. For over 55 years, beginning with Bob's father, Bob Sr., the Gabrielsons have used sweat and muscle to harvest one of the river's most precious resources, the shad. Every spring, this beautiful member of the herring family makes its annual migration from the sea and up the Hudson River to spawn, and the fishermen are waiting to take them. Placing their nets in the shadow of the Tappan Zee Bridge, the fishermen keep only what they can sell, mostly to expensive fresh restaurants in New York City. Yes, that's right. Fish taken for consumption from what many people still believe is one of the most polluted rivers in the country. In fact, despite its rather murky appearance, the fishermen claim that the Hudson River is one of the healthiest estuaries on the entire East Coast, and they show a plentiful bounty to prove it. In addition to the shad, the Hudson yields crabs, sturgeon, catfish, giant carp, blackfish, and the huge striped bass. However, despite its apparent health, the pollution that once almost destroyed this breathtaking place is still reaping its grim toll. The PCBs released by the General Electric plant upriver in Troy, New York, are still of a high enough level in the river to keep the state DEC from allowing certain fish to be sold for consumption. This includes the striped bass who run the river at the same time as the shad. It's ironic that the very health of the river is causing their return in such great numbers as to cause great harm to the shadmen. They clog the nets and have to be thrown back, dead or alive. It's a terrible waste, but it's the law. It bogs down the collecting of the shad catch, adding time and therefore greatly diminishing already meager profits. Because all of the fishing is done by hand, it turns a tough job into a nearly impossible one. Uh, I used to fish 4,500 foot of net, we used to, and now we're down to 1,000 foot of nets because of the mm -hmm. overpopulation of striped bass. And uh, now we're at a point right now, it's, it's, uh, the striped is getting so plentiful in the river and they're knocking us out. I, I can't even pick my shad nets and, and the shad themselves are being really hurt by the overpopulation of striped bass in the Hudson River by the offsprings coming down and the bass really tearing them up. Offshore fishing is also taking its toll. The tonnage taken by the local fishermen has decreased steadily since 1980. 
And even though all the fishermen claim that the river appears healthier now than it has been in over 25 years, unless the striper bass ban is lifted, it appears that after this year, where there once were hundreds, only three shad boats will remain, and those in only a limited capacity. But as long as people like the Gabrielsons live on the river, the tradition will survive. The river means a lot to me and my father. I mean, my whole life's been on it, his whole life has been on it. And I've always felt I could make a living. I based a lot of my education on the river. I based, you know, I've always said I, I can make a living here. And my father, he pretty much did most of his life. Well, I gotta say, I do love it. Uh, uh, every year I do come back. I mean, last year I said to my father, I says, Dad, I don't think I could handle another year. But after it usually sinks in for a while, I say, you know, I really did enjoy it. It's something, it's something that's in your blood. I feel a little special that I do it. I feel like this is what the Indians used to do. You know, I, I, it makes me feel, it makes me feel special. When I, when I come off, I walk on my, off the boat, I feel very proud. Once again, thanks to the Hudson River. There you go. Hats off to the Hudson River, yeah. I would say. I like the hats off Hudson River. <laughs> hats off indeed to Chris Letts, the Gabrielsons, and all who come to marvel and respect this magnificent natural resource called the Hudson River. Reporting for a Metro magazine, I'm Frank Lubono. Well, everybody, that just about does it for our first edition of Metro magazine. We hope you had as much fun as we did. And of course, we'd like to thank the folks right here at Skylands Manor.